So to kick us off, we finally have progress in the hallway, which has been a long time coming. We've been living in a building site, which is not ideal when it's dusty and you've got to live in one room because three rooms have been knocked apart. Anyway, we've had some issues with plastering, which I'll come on to, but for the time being, this room has been plastered, now needs to have a mist coat, which we'll do shortly. Um, we've had the flooring put on, which we're really, really pleased with. This is a, um, it's called Royal Oak by Camaro, and it's a, an LVT floor. So we had the old floor screeded over to create a level and flat surface for the LVT to go down. It's like a really nice, um, almost like a, it's a vinyl, but obviously it's more hard wearing, nicer quality, and it just clips together. So then if you ruin one part of it, you can replace them tile by tile. Um, so really pleased with that. Moving into the bathroom, I'm gonna show you the progress here. Um, well, as you can see, there isn't any. So sadly, after the video the other week where I ripped out the bathroom, I thought we were gonna be on a quick turnaround. However, we were let down multiple times by plasterers. So uh, the first plasterer, I booked in eight weeks in advance. The week before, I said, look, we are ripping out this bathroom. Just wanna check you're coming along. And uh, lo and behold, he didn't turn up. He then said he'd be there a week later, didn't turn up. And then now he doesn't answer any of my texts, any of my calls, which has been wonderful. Then after working or trying to work with a few other plasterers and being let down, we finally had two chaps come along, do a couple of evenings work, which is great to get it done. But then the downside of that is the workmanship wasn't great. So it's always something, but uh, you know, we, we live, we learn and we move on. Ring the banger today. This is the, the Liverpool car, the one that does all the miles, but she's very trusty. So yeah, we're just off to B&Q, which um, has to be said, I wouldn't necessarily recommend you go and shop at B&Q when it comes to DIY, only because, uh, only because the cost is absolutely astronomical. Um, but it's the nearest thing to us right now, and the extra amount I'd have paid to go and, and go to somewhere like Wix or Screwfix or Gardner Scardiefield, the extra amount I'll pay, I'll pay in fuel anyway to go and get there. So as we're just picking up a couple of cheap bits like dust sheets and uh, paint, I'll head to B&Q. So I bought some very basic B&Q interior paint. This is, I think it's eight quid or seven quid for the whole thing. And the reason for not going for a brand like Dulux is because this is gonna be used for the mist coat. Mist coat is where we mix the paint with water so it doesn't have to be a high quality. And we're literally gonna apply that to the brand new plaster so that it bonds with it really well. Um, so yeah, so this is going to be used for the mist coat and then I'll probably use Dulux or something similar for the actual main coats of paint. So just on a separate note, I've got a brand new launch coming up in a couple of weeks. So this is a brand new business venture that I've been working on for months and months now, putting stuff together behind the scenes, trying to systemize it before it even launches. And yeah, I'm really excited to bring this to you in the next one to two weeks. You'll see it launch and I'll do a video about it. But the brand is called Property X. That's all I'm saying right now. And you'll have to stay tuned to see what it's all about. It's one of the secret boxes. Sneak peek. Right, so the mist coat. There's a few things you're gonna need, so I'll run through them quick. Obviously paint, obviously gonna need the, the roller itself and a paintbrush for the edges. Ideally an extendable arm that you can use to do the, the ceiling. The tray itself, um, ideally not a mixing bowl, ideally a bucket, but obviously idiot here didn't buy one at B&Q. And then obviously a, a, a dust sheet, and then a, a, some bag clothes, basically. So, right. <laughs> Our clothing is on. But first of all, I'm going to mix the paint. I'm just going to grab something to mix that. Cool. So, ideally, if you've got an old whisk, this is perfect. Right. 
I'm going to go fill this up with water. I'll be back in one sec. Put a little bit too much water in, actually. So it's too high to be able to mix properly. But yeah, keep stirring it, keep mixing it, keep whisking it until it's all, whoop, until it's all one. Um, basically, everyone has a different opinion, but I like to do about 50-50. Some people like to do 25, 75, but it's all personal preference. Good job, I've got a uh, strong forearm. Now we're going to do the window sill in the front bedroom. Now I've already already primed the uh, window sill. So next up is the actual finishing coat. Now you can you can roll with this, but I often I personally think you get a better finish if you hand paint brush it on. <laughs> So today we're starting on the bathroom, which you'll have seen from a previous renovation video that I of course stripped back and after a long wait it's finally been bonded and plastered so we can get started on the floor. Now when we took up the old floor it was left with this sort of like horrible looking black stuff which is actually, I think it's called bitumen or bitumen or something like that and it's basically like an old damp proof course which would have been painted on. The problem with that is it makes it really difficult to um, put tile adhesive on it and put tiles on it because they just won't stick to it. So, so this is actually just called FlexiBond but it's just a different version of the Tile Master Primer. So I apply this to the floor with a roller or a brush, leave it to set for an hour and that means we can then get started with mixing the tile adhesive which I'll show you now and then we can start to lay the tiles and then let them set. So at this point I thought I'd just do a quick voiceover. Obviously you've just seen me scraping off the old plaster and I'm now rollering on the uh, tile primer, ready for me to, as you can see here, it's ready for me to now add the tile adhesive and then put the tiles down on top. So right now, yeah, you can see me here is mixing the tile uh, cement with water. As I mentioned here, you're actually a lot better off if you put the water in first, it's much easier to mix and I think that's just generally how it should be done. It took me a few goes to work that out and someone kindly messaged me to tell me. And, um, and here is me obviously putting the adhesive on the floor. Looks slightly suspicious or dodgy there, doesn't it? But, um, but yeah, moving on, we, uh, I then obviously spread the cement out using my trowel and then lay down the tile, making sure to get it completely even because you don't want uneven tiles. And once you push them down, once it's set, there is no moving it then. So uh, just give it a little clean, add your spacers, and um, in between each batch, of course, clean all your instruments. But as you can see, it's starting to take shape. Uh, the quick clip here I'm just showing you is the new holes that I've had to drill for the shower. And uh, as you can see, the old shower on the right, um, shower head, but that wouldn't have fallen in line with the new bath. Um, and these are the two tap holes I've had to put in. Ignore the one on the left, the little hole is a mistake. And this clip is me just showing you the waste that I've added for the sink. And this is the pipe work that I did that day. Unfortunately, I couldn't film it all. I would have loved to have shown it to you, but I put in all the pipes for the bath, ready for the shower as well. And um, yeah and I've installed the bath, which uh, as you can see, I've added in the waste. Spent a lot of time doing this with my dad the other day. We're a bit slow going, but it looks really great. I love the new black taps, obviously love the matte black. Here's the brand that I bought with um, the matching sink taps to go with it. Now, I just wanted to move over to the whiteboard to talk to you about the plans for the bungalow. But before I do, I wanted to show you this brand new loo roll holder that I've been sent by Copper X. Um, just wanted to give them a shout out really and say thank you. It's a handmade bespoke loo roll holder completely made out of copper piping 
and yeah I love it to be quite frank it's very unique it's, it's an absolute one-off piece so I will put up a little Instagram here of Cobex's Instagram page so that you can follow and say hello to George who's the guy behind the account and you can message him if you'd like bespoke pieces made for your properties uh, but moving on to the flip itself I wanted to talk through the layout I wanted to talk you through the plan because I've been getting a lot of questions as to what the extension is going to look like how I'm tackling the refurb whilst living here what I've done is drawn out the floor plan in its current layout which I hope you can see my lovely design and I'll quickly walk you through it so it's a very standard traditional bungalow as you can see as you come in this is the entrance at the top of the property here or top of the whiteboard as you come in you've got the hallway running all the way down the center of the property with the bedrooms at the front now obviously when it comes to buying bungalows there tends to be two types of layout and that is bedrooms at the front or bedrooms at the back now if you can get them at the front then it's definitely better because then you don't have to start moving the configuration or the layout as much you know when you're extending the property at the back you want the living rooms at the back and not adding an extension onto bedrooms so we're lucky here we've got bedroom one bedroom two already situated at the front of the bungalow and we're keeping them exactly the same, as well as the bathroom as well. And the way that we are refurbishing this bungalow is two steps, okay? So considering the fact we are living here, we've done the front half of the house first, you know, the bedroom one, bedroom two, bathroom, hallway, they're all currently getting done right now so that we can move back into all of them and live in all of those rooms in a nice modern state whilst we do the extension, which is gonna come in a few months time. Once we've completed the front half of this bungalow, which is very soon, once we complete that phase one, we're gonna take a step back just for a month or two to catch our breath, live normally for a while, and then we can start to, to get going on the extension, which is gonna start later this year, or at the latest beginning of 2022. Now, we've already had the architect's plans drawn up, and I was gonna to talk to you now just about the layout changes, what we're gonna be doing and utilizing. So, at the moment, you can see that we've got the kitchen at the back of the house here, as well as the sitting room, and then this kind of like naff conservatory that leaks a lot, as well as a rear porch, which at some point people thought was a really useful thing to have. Apart from having a washing machine and a tumble dryer out there, I don't find it useful whatsoever. So we're gonna be knocking these off. So the first part of the extension is to demolish the current conservatory and rear porch. Now to replace the old extension and what we're putting on as the new extension, we're gonna be making the most of permitted development. Now, don't shoot me if I get this wrong, but my understanding is you're allowed up to six meters as an extension under permitted development if you own a bungalow or house. We're gonna be making the most of that and doing a four or four and a half meter extension. We're just confirming that at the moment with architects. Now, what we're gonna try and do is create a lovely big kitchen, dining, living room area, quite common. Uh, but what this will do is make a lovely sized bungalow and we're gonna try and eke out an extra bedroom out of this as well. So the chosen and final layout is as follows, which I'm gonna draw. Um, the extension's actually gonna come in one meter from the edge of the uh, property here. And that's because our driveway cuts in at an angle just at the back here, so catering for that. We're gonna have a four meter, well let's just say this is four meter, obviously it's not to scale. We're gonna have a four meter extension on the back of the property just here. Now, where there used to be, or where there currently is, a uh, French door on the back of the sitting room, we're gonna widen that, open it up, and uh, remove the door, obviously, level it out. We don't actually have to do too much there because there's already a, a lintel supporting the back of the building, which is great. So that will open this up a bit more. And the other thing we're gonna do is move the kitchen. So the old kitchen is actually gonna become bedroom number three. So this will be bed three. We're going to extend the hallway down here create an opening here and block up the old door just along here. So we're now gonna add in a third bedroom which will be you know, very much like a study or a guest room. The hallway is now gonna come all the way down the middle of the bungalow which I really like. It's quite a nice wide open bright hallway and this will come all the way down. You'll be able to see straight through because there'll be double doors at the back here 
and this is going to be the kitchen area so we're going to have some units all, all along here probably an island there we'll even have a dining room uh, sort of area there meaning that it will flow through kitchen dining room sitting room area that'd be probably more of a snug kind of evening area so that's the layout we've chosen and that's what the architects are drawing up for us at the moment which we're really excited about now by doing this by creating this open plan living we've now created a large three bedroom bungalow with a sufficient amount of living space the only downfall to this bungalow is therefore the fact it only has one bathroom which we are still considering and could be the the main drawback of the property because apart from that i think it ticks a lot of boxes we're going to do it obviously in a really nice condition got lots of parking got a garage got a lovely garden facing west so there's a lot of ticks for this property the only one being that at the moment there is only one bathroom now if you're in a victorian property where you've got suspended wooden floors and you can run pipe work quite easily you'd probably be able to go in and put an ensuite in to quite a lot of you know to any of these bedrooms quite easily however being that we are in a bungalow we've got concrete floors which means a lot of exposed pipe work it makes it slightly more difficult so we are still toying with the idea of an additional bathroom or an ensuite but it may not happen um, for those of you that are wondering about the loft extension we've decided not to go ahead with that because we're talking another additional 30 40 000 pounds in which you might see a bit of a return on but maybe not enough to warrant the additional work that is required now i hope this has been interesting and that you can see our plans for the bungalow don't forget my new business is launching on sunday the 29th of august if you want to subscribe to my newsletter hit that link in the description and as always I'll see you in the next video.